Okay, well, welcome to this session of the uh, Technology and Learning Faculty Conference. I'm Stan Warford. Uh, I teach computer science at Cedar College. And what I would like to do today is take you through uh, my experience in putting computer science courses, doing lecture capture uh, with some computer science courses and putting them up on iTunes U. So uh, today we'll cover these this ground. We're uh, first start off by um, describing the 2013 Learning Technology Grant uh, that funded this effort. Then I want to spend quite a little bit of time on the iTunes U experience, what from a student's perspective. So what the student sees on iTunes U. And then we'll go behind the scenes and show a little bit of what's involved in editing the lectures. And then uh, after the lectures get edited, then you post it on iTunes U. So there's a whole process involved there. And then um, perhaps the most uh, relevant thing will end up with lessons learned, lots, lots of stuff that I learned, and things that worked and things that didn't work. And I even have, I even have a recommendation or two for the university, actually. So those of you who are ministers here, uh, administrators here, might be interested in that. And there, there should be a lot of time for, for Q&A. I, I, I don't anticipate that this is going to uh, drag on. So let's first start with the uh, Learning and Technology Grant. I actually, um, before I received the grant, I had actually done quite a bit of work on my own. Um, back in 2010, um, I was motivated to uh, put my first course up on iTunes U in the fall of 2010, a math class called Formal Methods. I had a, um, I had a, a female athlete, a, a woman student, who was on the women's volleyball team. And her, um, her practice schedule conflicted with my class, and she wanted to major in computer science, and if she couldn't take the courses because of the class conflict, she couldn't do it. And I'd always had in the back of my mind, I thought, well, you know, I've always wondered with all this technology and lecture capture. So I, I actually started that first class with her. That was my motivation to do that. And so I just kept on, it worked pretty well, and so I just kept on doing it. So that for the, the two years, um, uh, fall and spring of 2010 and 2011, I, I recorded the uh, two math classes, and then those are freshman level classes, and then the, um, I have some computer science classes that I teach also, data structures and computer systems that I recorded and posted in fall 2011 and 2012. And then um, with the funding that I used with, with this grant, with the 2013 Innovation in Learning Technology grant, I, uh, you know, uh, my first e our first efforts are always, you know, the first time around, there's things you, we should have done differently. So I used uh, the money for, for this grant to actually re-render the, the Math 220, the formal methods class. So we, we re-rendered that, uh, re-edited those, and I got those po uh, 40 lectures posted on those. And then I recorded two new courses, Computer Science 450, Programming Paradigms, and Computer Science 425, Computer Organization. We recorded those, and I'm, we're halfway through um, editing and posting the Programming Paradigms class. As a matter of fact, a little bit later in the lecture, we're going to actually post some material for my Programming Paradigms class, which is lecture 29. And so we'll see how that process works. Okay, so um, first the iTunes U experience. So what I've got now is a sequence of video shots from an iPhone. Uh, students can uh, experience iTunes U either from uh, either with uh, I iPhone or iPad. And if they don't have any iOS devices, it's also possible for them to, to uh, access the materials through the iTunes U app on a Windows or, or Mac machine. So here is a little video of the of the uh, of an iPhone, and so iTunes U is this app right here. And so let's continue on with the. So you tap the app, and what comes up is um, is the catalog of courses that the student has access to that who has, that the student subscribes to. So here's computer systems, data structures, discrete formal methods, and then of course the student can scroll, user can scroll down. 
And there's a Pepperdine Bible lecture. It's programming paradigms, that's the one we did. And this last, this last one here at the bottom, the Stanford one, that's the one that I modeled my, uh, my course at my, my iTunes U organization after. Uh, so that, that was kind of the, the big model that we had, I used. Okay. And now what, what we did here is the user clicked the, uh, you see the, these, these icons in the bottom. You've got info, posts, notes, and materials. So the user clicked on posts. So now we're going to go to uh, landscape view. And then the user is scrolling through the posts. So now what, we want, what I want to show now is there's these four, uh, the way iTunes courses are organized, you have these four, oops, we have these four um, uh, items that we can look at, info, posts, notes, and materials. And so what we're going to do is uh, go to the info. And under info, you have an overview. So you click on the overview. There's the overview of the class. Catalog description, you can include that. Then we'll go back, click on the instructor. So there's a little instructor. You can email the instructor from the, there's an email link on the, and then, and then this next one is, is, is the key one. Uh, it's the outline. So this is the outline of the course. And each one of these, um, let me pause here, each one of these uh, items in the outline corresponds to a lecture. So the course is organized around, around what the, the way a normal course would be. Every day you have a lecture. And so the outline, basically these are the titles of the lectures. Then, uh, then also texts, so you can have your, you know, what textbooks are required for the course. And if you have any papers that are, that you can have links to the papers, so you can click on the link to, for the paper. And then the PDF, the paper will be downloaded in iTunes in the, in the app, and the student can, you know, access the paper that way. So uh, that's another aspect of what, of what iTunes U courses give you. Okay, so then we're going to go back, and now we're going to do posts. So now uh, we click on all posts. So each one of these posts, again, they're organized around the lecture. So each lecture has a title, and then look at some of these items that you can do. You can visit the Pepperdine course webpage. You can view the video. You can review here. You can review slides. And so here, what will happen is the student will come down and find uh, the lecture or the, the particular uh, lecture that he's interested in. So we're going to do lecture seven and take a look at the, um, so when the student taps on the view lecture six video, well, it, the video downloads on the device and the student can view the lecture. So now here is, uh, we're, don't worry, we're not, we're not going to we'll scrub through this. <laughs> but um, so here's, uh, So here what we're going to do is see what So let me pause right here. So this is the intro, all right? And Pepperdine University supplies, supplies us with the intro clip. Okay. Then after the intro comes the title. Okay, and then the lecture starts. All right. So anyway, so here we go. So let's, it's let's a great see. hot Thursday. Man, it's hot out. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, I, you know, you're. It's the, it's lecture capture. I mean, that's really you. You're whatever you say. I tell you, that's. What, I, I notice I'm being captured now too. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm used to it. <laughs> but let's let's scrub here a little bit and. See, so the camera, so what we do is we train the cameraman to... 2 plus 3, parentheses, plus 4. We know that this equals 2 plus, parentheses, 3 plus 4, right? This is the associate, this is the associative law for what operation? For, for what? Addition. 
the problem is, or you know, the, the point is that this doesn't work for exponentiation. It's not true. So let's look at the slide. It's not true that if you take three to the fourth, and then you take that to the fifth, that's not the same thing as taking three to the parentheses four to the fifth. You see what I mean? So the parentheses. So anyway, you notice. So what we have, we you've got lecture, you've got slides, you got the transitions between the slides and the lecture, you got the, you know, you got the board work. So all that, and then, and so that, here's a transition. Uh, let's finish out the transition. You know, you can move the parentheses from here to here. Okay, and now, so that's one element, is you have, we, have to incorporate, we have to incorporate the slides in the lecture. So let's scrub here. And then, and notice that the way, the way this works is that when I'm referring to the slide, then the picture in picture on the video has me referring to the slide, but then the slide is incorporated in the editing process. We don't just take a video of the screen. That was the first problem. We did that on the very first lecture and found out right away that, you know, that doesn't work anyway. So anyway, that's part of the editing process. Now there's one more element that I want to show you. In my computer science classes, a lot of, a lot of what we do is computer demo. So let me see if I can get this transition. <clears throat> okay, so let's write fermion number and repeatedly squared. So, here we go. Okay, so here we are in Dr. Rackett, and I tell you what, let's do first things first. Let's define, so now can you tell me, let's define fermion number. Okay, so how do we do that? This is up in our definition panel. Define. Mm hmm so let's call it F E R M A T dash, okay. and so on. So not so that's another element that we have in the lecture is uh, you know if you have, if you do demos on a computer, which we do I do a lot in my lectures, um, then you screen capture you screen capture the the process of, of doing the the demo, but then again you don't take a video of the screen. You got to incorporate that in the editing process. So now so that's. If you, I think we've learned enough about Fermat numbers. <laughs> Let's, uh, so here's the whole lecture scrubbing through. And then at the tail end, so here's another one with the picture and picture on the side. And then at the tail end, well, the last thing that we always do is... Shall we wait till next time? I suppose we'll need to wait till next time. We'll start here. Oh, that's just tomorrow anyway. Anyway. All right. Good deal. See you tomorrow. Okay, and so this is the outro. Also, the university also su supplies us with the intro and the outro. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, what how a student uh, you know experiences the lecture process, the lecture down, uh, you know, just by tapping. And then the other thing that's available is you've got uh, with each one of these things you've got slides. So the slides that the student. Um, can see in the video are also available on iTunes U as PDFs. And the student can view the slides on PDF. And actually, I'm not demonstrating it here, but while the lecture is being, uh, is on, the student can swipe back and view the slides and hear the audio of the lecture. So, but, but here again, these slides are PDF quality. So the student can actually be listening to the lecture and it can be running in the background while the student looks at the slides on iTunes U. And these are, um, yeah, so, and these are, high, you know, high quality PDFs. You can zoom in, if you have small type, you can, you know, expand the screen and zoom in and all that stuff. It's really, it's really a great platform. Okay, so now, um, so those are the posts. Now, the next thing is notes. So, let me pause right here. So, um, So with notes, what happens is the student can take notes on the lectures, can take notes on, can take course notes, can take audio video notes. And then the last thing that, we, that is important in the experience is the materials. And so if you look at materials, we're gonna click on all materials here. 
Okay, and all the materials, you know, the lecture, the slides, the, the documents, the course web page, um, all of these are, are available for the student to, to tap on and to access. Um, and I think, oh, and web links. So not only can you download PDFs, but you can also have access to the course web page from the app. And, uh, this, and it's a fully functional, you know, the web browsing experience is built into the iTunes app. So all the links of your web page work, that, you know, you, they can go to the course web page and all that within iTunes U. And so all you have to do is supply a link as one of the elements of, for the posts. Okay. So it's a great experience. I mean, it's, I, I just, I think it's a, it's free. It's a great experience and it's free. And Pepperdine has, you know, uh, Kevin Miller is the one who helped me, I can give acknowledgement to him, is the one who helped me get, we just kind of work together to, to get this uh, whole system all, all set up. He's the, he's the rep, he's the Apple rep for us. Okay, so that's the iTunes U experience. Now, editing the lectures, what we do is we use Final Cut Pro 10. It's an Apple product, it costs $300, but it's a full-featured, professional, I mean, this is what the pros use to edit real movies. And the nice thing about it is that it's not, it's not, that, hard to, it's not that hard to learn. Um, the other thing that, uh, that I did was, uh, from the grant money was I was able to purchase a Promise Pegasus 6 terabyte hard drive. Um, each lecture, uh, you know, a whole series of about 40 lectures, this video takes up a lot of space. But a whole, uh, you can get, I get a, a one semester's, you know, maybe 40 or 50 lectures on one terabyte. So um, that's the other, that's the hardware that was required. And now, um, and so all the, those elements that you saw in the video, I have a little, um, these are the elements that you have to incorporate. The intro, the title, the lecture, lecture slides, lecture demos, and the outro. And I have a little uh, video here that is actually uh, I've made available to the public of, of of this editing process. So I have a student, I had a student do these screencasts. Here's, this is a picture of, of the Final Cut Pro app application. This is a snapshot of the clip and it, what happened is on this first lecture, the setting on the camera was wrong and the color was, notice how it's all orange, so we need to do color correction, but we were able to correct that inside the iTunes, inside the uh, Final Cut Pro app, and um, so here's our library. Each you you have a library. I have a library for each course, and then each one of these sub items within the library is an event. Each event is a lecture, and then this panel contains all the um, the items for that lecture. So I want to just give you a taste of this. We'll start this off. I have a student who uh, who's, who never did this. How to create a new um, project in Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, for Dr. Warford's um, class lectures. So we begin by creating a new project and we uh, name it the same as the event. So com Computer Science 450, 2013, 08, 06. We'll select OK. And so then we're going to go to the Generators browser and uh, go to the Solids category and select Custom. And we're going to place it into the timeline with the format of 1080i HD, 1920 by 1080, and the frame rate is 29.97i. And so we'll select OK, and we will right click this and change the duration to 60 minutes. <coughs> and we'll hit return. And so now we have the timeline set up. And so we will add the intro outro video. Okay, so this is that intro part. Line. You just drag it. We'll just drag this into the timeline and snap it to the beginning. And then we will um, go to the titles browser yeah, now the title. and select basic title and drag that in and snap it. Okay, so let's scrub over that. I want to show you after you get the title all set up. So now, then we'll drag in the clip. Oops. Ah, sorry. Okay, so this tutorial just, uh, demonstrates how to create a new um, 
project in Final Cut. Just the pad, the video. So you just drag it in. to the end of the title. And we will select the title so that the yellow bar goes around it and hit Command T to create the transition. And so now we have the intro, the title, and the video. So anyway, you get a feel for what the editing process is like. And then later on in the video, he corrects with the color and it shows. There's, it's, it's, it's the same kind of process for incorporating a slide. Um, you, you, know, you drag the slide in there and then you, you, make it, you shift it to the left and you make the video 25% and you move it up and it's all just point and click and you do it. And, uh, so that that's, gives you a kind of a flavor of what the editing process is like. Okay, so now after you edit the, after you edit the, uh, the video, then, and you have all your materials ready, then you, there's another process that you've got to go through to actually post it to iTunes U. Now, we're going to do a little cross our fingers and hope because we're going to do a live demo and I'm going to upload to iTunes U now a set of slides. Okay, so we'll see how to do that. Now, the way, the way we do it is Apple provides iTunes U course manager. And the way you manage your materials on iTunes U is through a web interface. So you just open your browser, you, you, ha you have an account, Kevin sets you up with an account. You have an account on iTunes U, you open your browser, and you manage all that. And so what we're going to do is we're going we're to do a live demo, we're going to up upload some slides now, and we hope that yeah, everything works. So here's our browser. You put in your name and your credentials here, and we'll click this and cross our fingers. And it looks like it's going to work. So here is the here is the iTunes U course manager. So what you have is you have all these um, these uh, courses. So here's programming paradigms. That's the one we're going to use. And you can scroll, you know, create a new course down here if you want to create a new course. And actually, while we're here, I think this is kind of interesting. One of the things that they provide you is number of students. Well, now, there's no way that my computer systems course <laughs> had 3,000, or here, data structures had 2,900 students. This is the number of unique IP addresses of students who have accessed the course. So I'm literally having thousands of students take the course online. So this is external visibility for my program, you know. And this one, uh, this one here has 30 students. Well, my class, this is the one that's in progress now. It's only half the, only half the course is posted now. So we're going we're gonna to do this one. Programming Paradigms. So let's click on Programming Paradigms. Loading course. And now what, and, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the posts. And we're going to scroll down here to, um, see, I think we want to do Lecture 29. OK, so here's Lecture 29, Constructing, Decomposing, and Comparing Terms. And then we already have the, le the lecture is already, is already up on that. So now what we want to do is um, let's see. Oh, I have to scroll. Oh, it's off screen. Here we go. So now uh, we want to add assignment. So we add assignment. And we already have view lecture 29 and the lecture 29 here. And now what we want to do is we want to say review lecture 29 slides. So we'll do review, whoops. So we'll do review lecture 29. Slides, period, and then we'll do attach material. And then it asks us, you want, where do you want it to come from? So they say, from my computer. And so we'll go to 
computer science 450, and here we have the I2G slides, and here we scroll down to lecture 29 slides, we click on this, we choose this, and then there's our upload, and then we And we save it. <laughs> we can see that. All right. And then, and now we save. It. And now, what? Now there's one more thing. So that's up there. And so, so that's what it takes. The same thing to upload a video a lecture only just takes a little bit longer. Right? There's a limit. Uh, they, there's a file size limit uh, that Apple imposes on the uh, uh, on the on the on how long a, a lecture a video can. But, um, but you can, it's easy, it's easy one hour lecture, it's, it's easy to come in uh, below the limit. All right, so I was gonna do a few more things, but I think I'll, uh, for the sake of time, we'll go back to, to, our, to our presentation. So we'll have time for Q&A. Um, so now, lessons learned and recommendations. All right, so here's, here's what I found out doing this whole experience. First of all, it was amazing to me. I have been teaching for decades. It was amazing to me how motivated I was to improve my classroom presentation, knowing that I'm going to be recorded. That, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, you would think after all these years, you know, but the, I found, I discovered, you know, wait a minute, what about my slides, or the organization of my slides? The whole, my whole, it's, it's like, it was, it, the, the, I, I, it, this is subjective, but I think that the quality of my, of my lectures improved immensely knowing that it was going to be recorded, going to be recorded. Another big benefit is when you do, when you post a course on iTunes U, you are, everything is paperless. So this was, this was a huge motivation for me to go paperless. It's amazing how my files, my paper files in my office now have just been shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Everything's, it, so this was, I, I was in the process of trying to do that anyway, but this really accelerated the process, going paperless. But the most important thing is the student benefit. And I already mentioned that the thing that motivated me for my first uh, uh, lecture capture uh, effort was I had a student who had a, a class conflict with, the, with her, uh, her athletic you know, practice schedule. Well, well once, I, once I got that course up and, and another one up, then I started having students come to me and say, hey, Dr. Warford, I want to go to international programs. I want to go to the Florence program or the Heidelberg program. And, and they said, can I do that so be a computer science major? And I, and I used to say, well, you know, we don't offer computer science courses in the international program, so if you do that, you're going to have to do that and double up, blah, 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 or go in the summer. So now what has happened is, when these once once your course is up on iTunes U, I have now a student who is in Heidelberg who is taking a course that I am offering in Malibu, and a student is looking is doing the lectures at the same viewing the lectures at the same time on the same time schedule that I'm giving them in Malibu. We Skype for office hours, okay. Homework is handed in electronically anyway, and then. Um, the only thing that I have to require that I ask of the staff in the, in, at, you know, in, in the uh, European campus is that they proctor one or two exams. That's all they have to do. It's all coordinated with them. But I've had, I've had many students now who are able to take advantage of the international programs by taking the course on I, you know, through the iTunes U and the lectures, and, um, uh, that, and they would not otherwise be able to do it. So that's another, another huge uh, advantage. And here's another one that I had no idea this was going to happen. The students who are in, who are taking the course, who have access to the same lectures offline, frequently come to me and tell me, wow, I really like it that these things are online because they, they, they come to class and, you know, since we as professors know our material so well, we kind of have a tendency to, you know, go through it maybe quicker than we, you know, than we should. And I have one. Stu I have students tell me to say, "Well, yeah, yeah I, I saw this section. I went back and I and I looked at it again, and you know, I was, you know, I don't know, in the kitchen or you know, 
in the bathroom or something, and I can stop and pause it. Now, what did he say? And back up and then listen to it again. So even students who take the course, you would think that they would be the ones that don't need it, but they, you know, they they benefit also. And then the other the other thing that we have is uh, that's good about this is we is that we get external recognition. Um, I have people who you know email me from all over the world actually, um, and it's good. It's good. It speaks well of our pro it, it's, it speaks well of our program whenever they whenever they use our materials. And I have students. I, ha I actually have people who say now I want my kids to come to Pepperdine or something like that. So it's actually it's actually a good uh, recruiting. So here's my recommendation for you administrators who are here. I really believe that this this is has super high value. But here's the thing. I think Rick Mars mentioned that it's time intensive. It is time intensive. I happen to be a computer geek and I like to learn how to use Final Cut Pro, but, but most people don't have the time or the inclination to do that. But on the other hand, once you get this expertise to record and edit and upload, as an institution, I think what we could do is we could actually, we could offer an incentive for professors to publish their course online and, and, and treat it as if the same way that you would publish a book. Because that's basically what you're doing. You're creating an academic artifact, you know? And so I view publishing a course online the same way as publishing a book. And I think that it would be, I think that, that if the IT, if, if Pepperdine could, um, could develop this in-house expertise and offer it to other faculty members, so say, hey, do you want to do lecture capture? Here we will do that, and and ha and, and and have the the recording and the editing, but then leave the uploading and the organization, of course, with iTunes. You, the course manager, to the professor, but at least getting the content. That's that's I think would be a viable way to to go ahead with that. Okay, and here's a couple of resources if you're interested. That video that I showed you that has the um, you know, how to do the editing. All, I, we've, I've documented this. There's an online PDF document that has all the settings, how to do the slides, how to save all that stuff. And, and uh, so that's available too. So we do have a few minutes for questions. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, we were told some time back that you know, they didn't want students copying our lectures in the classroom because of copyright. How does that work? Yes, okay, I have a really definite philosophy about that. I, there is this, um, I'm open source fanatic. And I do, I use the um, commons, I use the commons with attribution license that lets them do that. So I don't believe, I don't, I don't believe in copywriting my material to be put online. So you have to buy into that. If that's an issue, then yeah, that's, that might be a hindrance. But that's my, that's, the way I view it, anyway. Mm -hmm. Have you found that putting your lectures online affects the students that are attending the lectures? You know, I get that question all the time, and I will have to say that it does for one or two students. I have a student now who's missing a lot of class, and I, I know she's getting the stuff online. She comes in occasionally for help, but you know what? She's getting the material, and she chooses so I don't have a good answer for, you know, for that, if you view that as a problem. But, yeah. It, but it hasn't been as significant as you would think. I mean, I thought going into it, I, I, I was concerned about that. I thought going into it, yeah, that might be a problem. But it, that has not really been a real problem, except for maybe just one or two students. Yes? As I was listening to your presentation, I was really wondering about time and and i appreciate you acknowledging at the end that this is very time consuming the concern that i have is how much administrative support you actually had doing this were you able to access um funding through you know what i guess one of the office of research and sponsored program projects for your student who was working with you on this the apple representative um how well, did the team work mm -hmm. well, practically? Well, Kevin was free. <laughs> <laughs> and the only, I did get help from the department. They bought the camera. 
Okay, so that my department did that just so we have a camera in house now, so we have the capability to do that. I I did I do get student the uh, student salary support. The money that I got from the grant I used for the software, the hard drive, and the student salary support for doing the editing and the lecture and the actual video videoing. So yeah, it was, but it's not like there was one. It was not like there was one source that provided it all. It came from different parts. Uh -huh. um, in electric capture, though, audio quality is really important. Oh, what do you do? To yeah, that's that's a good question. I didn't mention it, but we don't use the built-in camera on the. We don't use the built-in mic on the camera. We use a separate lapel pin with a with a transmitter, and plug that into the camera. And that's how we get the good uh, audio quality. So don't, yeah, I would not recommend that you use the built-in mic on the camera. Okay. Yeah, and we don't, and, and that's easy to do. You just, you know, you just, all, all cameras have the ability to just plug in a remote, a remote mic. Anything else? Okay, I'm saying, uh, let me preface my question by, uh, just saying, technically, I'm not an Apple representative. Uh, I'd probably be a lot more money if I were. <laughs> I work for a couple of the libraries. Um, you, uh, as a believer in open access, have made your courses available on the open web from the beginning, but there is an option to um, limit uh, this to your students. Have you ever right. implemented that? And could you talk a little bit yeah, about that? Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I did not mention the difference between the two. There's two, there's actually, there's actually three things that are different that you can choose between. One is you can limit your course just to your, your class. So and Apple provides that facility to just offer it to only make it available to either you either your specific class or the Pepperdine community as opposed to the general public. I just chose not to do that. Okay. And another thing that you can choose, another thing, another choice that you have is whether you want the course to be synchronized with when you are teaching it during a particular calendar time. So if you want the course to be, if you want discussion groups, you know, discussing the topic as it's being covered during a particular semester, then you can set it up that way. I also chose not to do that. So the course is up there and anybody can view, or anybody who has access to it can view it in any sequence at any time. So there's those two options that, yeah. That, that, that you have when you set up a course on iTunes. Mm -hmm. Could your course also be looked at as uh, part of an online school? Could it be associated with that with Pepperdine? Are they moving in that direction? Well, uh, yeah, that's a good question, and I don't have the answer to whether what Pepperdine thinks about this. Is in fact, when I first started doing this, it's kind of like it's better to do it first and ask permission <laughs> or ask forgiveness <laughs> than to than to ask permission and be told no. So I was, and I was a little surprised that they would let me do this. <laughs> Frankly, I mean, the first time I did it, I thought, oh, I wonder what's going to happen now. But, you know, we, we just did it, and it's, and it's working. And I don't know, to answer your question, I don't know what Pepperdine, if we have, I don't know if, if we're thinking, which too bad the provost isn't here. I don't know what our thinking is on that as an institution. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm wondering whether... Classroom? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, I'm right on the verge. <laughs> I could, I, you're right, right. I'm right on the verge of doing that. I'm, I'm, uh, that's a little scary for me <laughs> to give up that control. But anyway, that's a good question. And it's certainly doable. And I kind of had that in the back of my mind when I started this whole thing. And I'm right to the point where I could do that. I just haven't taken that final plunge. <laughs> Regarding the question earlier about uh, online classes, so the Grazia School and the Graduate School of Education Psychology have online programs. Seaver College uh, has a, a, a faculty committee convened to to uh, issue a, a policy or practice going forward. So uh, at some point in time, there will be a formal structure at the, the undergraduate school. Um, and that's, uh, that's what I know about that. Yeah, but see, I think that effort is more <laughs> I think that effort is more, they don't want the Seaver undergraduate experience to be too much online. I think 
I think that is another issue, another concern that at the C at Seaver is a concern for the uh, for academic quality, and I, that might be what that group is. is yeah, I, I think it's it's both the the academic quality and then just some some policy. So if someone who goes abroad can they take all their classes online? You know, never oh, class in Heidelberg, yeah. and and no, I mean, they're just trying to have some some standards yeah. about what is acceptable and, and how often you can take your classes. Okay. Well, thank you very much.